Well, let's bring in our next guest. We are now joined by El Maestro Mauricio Herrera, who will be fighting on December 13th at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. How are you doing, Mr. Herrera? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. It's, it's our pleasure. You know, we're looking forward to seeing you back in the ring. We have a few questions that we want to ask you. I'm joined by my co-host, of course, Ryan Bivens. So we'll ask you some questions about the fight and uh, get your opinions on how things are going and what you can teach this young man who's going to step into the ring, this young lion, on uh, December 13th. Um, I will actually ask you, you know, how do you feel we are under four weeks out from your fight? How do you feel with your development and how camp has been going as you get to, closer to your fight date? Uh, camp is going smooth, you know, really uh, confident, you know, going into this fight and motivated, you know, having fun in camp. And um, like I said, we're ready to go. I mean, um, this fight uh, is another tough fight in my career. So that's uh, all the motivation there, you know, just um, the, the tougher they are, you know, the better for me, brings the best out of me. So we're going to get uh, prepared 100%. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to Ryan, and I'll be jumping in and out with you as uh, he asks you some questions about the fight. Yeah, um, hi, Mauricio. Hello. I was wondering, uh, were you surprised that, you know, Jose Benavidez's team took this fight so soon in their career? Uh, in a way, in a way, but, um, you know, I've I've seen um, Benavidez fight, you know, I've checked him out on the Internet before, and, and he seemed like a good prospect on his way up. So, um, in a way, I was surprised. Um, this kind of had me thinking, you know, what what do they see in me, or is it something that they don't see in him? Maybe they want to, uh, you know, to make it or break it on his side. Or, um, you know, maybe they they see that he can have something on me. So, um, either way, you know, we're going to come prepared, and, and we're ready for anything. I mean, uh, I think it's a big step up for him, you know. Yeah, um, did you catch the uh, the Saddam Ali uh, Luis Carlos Abreu fight? I uh, actually haven't recorded. I, I haven't finished watching it. It's just seen like the first couple of rounds. But, yeah, uh, he, Ali similar situation. Good. Yeah, similar situation there. Ali didn't have the experience and uh, he was expected to lose, but uh, he pulled off the upset. But um, stylistically, it is a big difference because going into the fight, we all knew Ali was a better technical boxer. We just didn't know if he he was seasoned enough to you know stick to a game plan long enough to to actually win the fight. Whereas you know your fighter, he can't just come and expect to outbox you because that's you are the spoiler numero uno in your division. Yeah, no, I, I think. Um... I think I'm a different fighter from any fights that uh, you know Benavides has had in his career. So I think it's going to be him that's going to make some some changes that he's never had to do. So I think he's going to have to adjust, and I think that's where you'll see if he can uh, go along with it, you know, or he, he may just uh, uh, be all over the place. Yeah. So um, about the weight, uh, 140. Is is that something you just want to? Is that is that a weight you you plan on campaigning at for like a long time, or are you going to move up? Uh, you know, I, I do want to move up. Um, um, I'll fight at 140. You know, as long as they keep giving me you know competitive fights, great fights, and then um, I, I can still make 140. So I have no problem. But uh, you know, I really would like to go to 147 eventually. You know, I know there's a lot of big fights there too. So. I'm open to uh, to going up as well. So um, so after Danny Garcia moves up and wait, you you'll still be able to join him and uh, troll him some more to get oh, that yeah, rematch. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> for exactly. I'm not going. There. I'll go up and waiting too, and as well, and harass him if I have to. <laughs> uh, if I could just jump in uh, right here, you know, kind of piggybacking on the fight that. Or um, the statement you just said that Benavides tends to be all over the place, you know, given his youthful nature. How do you plan to, without disclosing too much of your strategy, how do you plan on diffusing kind of that youthful exuberance, you know, to keep him and settle him into your fight? Um, you know, I'm going to fight uh, with my rhythm, you know, or my way, uh, my pace. You know, Benavides is a guy that's uh, patient. He's a patient fighter. You know, he's he seems calm, collected when he fights for a young fighter, and um, I just gotta make him uncomfortable. Move, uh, move ways that opposite of all the fighters he faced. You know, move just a different way, do everything different, and and that comes with my, you know, just my natural skills of, of 
and style, you know, it just normally throws most fighters off. And I think that's going to be a big difference in this fight. Given that, you know, uh, I've read uh, some stories that Benavides has some trouble with his hands. He's been experiencing some hand issues early in his career. Do you have some things in place to, you know, kind of aggravate those injuries? Like how do you rate your chin if he happens to connect with you and he does have brittle hands? Uh, well, I think I have a pretty good chin. Uh, he may hurt his hands on my head, you know, if if he connects me. I don't know if you, if you follow my career. I've I never been dazed or knocked down or hurt, you know, and um, uh, I, I just take the punches very well. So Benavides is going to see the night when he hits me with his best shots and I don't go anywhere. Uh, it can start going to be a mental thing, you know. So I think Benavides is going to have a lot of tests in that fight that he's going to have to pass, you know. It's going to be a lot of things that are going to be brand new for him come that night. As you move into the preparations of this fight, you know, looking back past to the Danny Garcia fight, I think that's been a real defining moment in your recent career. A lot of people, myself included, felt that you won that fight. How difficult was it for you to pick yourself and keep yourself motivated while on one hand you were largely considered to have won that fight even though the record doesn't indicate it, how how do you keep yourself up and hungry and motivated for the next fight following that? Well, you know, I, I've been used to it. So, I mean, I mean, if you look at, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of get to me, you know, to, you know, the timing of my career, you know, with me even go back to Rizlan, you know, beating Rizlan and, like, you know, getting the credit for it. And then, you know, a jury goes and beats Rizlan at the right time and, and goes out to fight for over a million for Pacquiao. So, you know, a lot of stuff I had to go through that way that, you know, still made me strong and, and still stay in the gym and just said, you know, my time will come. So when Danny came along, uh, you know, it was in Puerto Rico. So, you know, it was kind of expected, you know, that uh, he was going to have the advantage over there on uh, on everything. So, um, you know, going into the fight, I knew, you know, that um, that was a possibility the judges uh, would favor him. You know, the crowd and everything would, kind of help him out and uh, so after the fight you know I thought I won the fight you know and 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 you know when we we didn't get the decision um didn't really take it uh too hard you know it wasn't until I got home you know and and really started just feeling a little down you know kind of thinking what if I would have had those belts you know it would have been life-changing um not to say that even even though I felt I won I mean it still changed my life in a way but, you know, having those belts would have been something big, you know. So I think about that at times, but, I mean, I don't really let it get to me. I I know I still got a lot to prove. I'm always proving myself, uh, and I'm always getting tested. You know, they're always giving me the tough guys, and, and I've been doing my best. You know, it's, it, it's hard to beat me decisively. So, I mean, I'm, I just stay motivated because um, I got to keep – I mean, nothing else to do. I got to just keep going forward, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead, Ryan. Um, let's see. You know, it's it's really not much to talk about your opponent because he's he really hasn't done anything yet. <laughs> it's a, it's a guy like nothing <laughs> to gauge what the guy, you know, can bring to the table because honestly, looking at his resume, it's like nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really yeah, well, it, it, the thing he got is he's young and hungry, and he hasn't, you know, he hasn't lost. So most undefeated guys that come in like that, you know. I don't want Theo to go, so I'm sure he's gonna fight uh, all out. I mean, we're we're both hungry. I'm so hungry for a world title. He's hungry to get just any title right now. So uh, I think that's gonna make it a, a great night and great show. It's gonna be oh, yeah, different. Speak, now. Yeah. yeah, speaking of uh, the world title, you you are the interim WBA champion now. The the full WBA champion, or well, the regular WBA champion is Jesse Vargas, and he's yeah, gonna be fighting. Just, uh, Antonio DeMarco pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't understand any of these belts. Um, <laughs> I guess, I guess, like, I think Boom Boom Mancini said it. Hey, all these belts are, how many worlds is there? So, right. So I, I understand yep. it. But, I, but belts are good. I mean, even if they're, you know, if you don't know what they are, but it just means you, you are getting some kind of money and you eventually want to get a world title belt. So, I mean, even an interim title is is okay, but it's not what you really want. 
Um, but it looks mm-hmm. good, and fighters like belts. So <laughs> I'm going to meet this up for this fight. He wants it, and uh, but I want a world title. Yeah. So do you think you would be able to get the winner of Jesse Vargas versus Antonio DeMarco? Uh, maybe. I mean, I think that's the way it should go, right? I mean, I mean, right. I mean, if, if you're the interim champion, you know that. I mean, it doesn't make sense for them for you to be fighting uh, on a regular basis as interim champion when the the regular champion is also fighting. Like the point of the interim yeah. title is they're not fighting, so you have to fight. But if they're exactly. fighting, they should have to defend their title against you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, before this fight, um, they were before. I guess um, we were talking about a Jesse Vargas fight. And then um, I don't know what happened, but uh, he eventually hooked up with Demarco. And I, that's what I was saying. Hey, wh- why didn't I get Jesse Vargas? I mean, he has that belt, the same belt. So it didn't go that way. So you know, that's why I just don't get it. I don't get how they're working. But um, who knows? Maybe we will. I will fight the winner of that if everything goes good with Benavides. Um, uh, we don't know. Or you know, there's Verslan Provokov in the future. I mean, that's a fight uh, we still love to fight. I mean, I think we uh, we can make we can put a great show on. So uh, there's there's just a lot of fights out there. I mean. It's, just if both sides, I guess, had to agree on it. Yeah. Speaking of Ruslan, what do you make of him fighting, you know, uh, a 479-year-old version of Jose Luis Castillo? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess the only one to take the fight. Uh, I think, I guess they weren't offering any money with, you know, everybody else. You know, they were just saying everybody was turning him down, but yeah, you there was one no of the guys, money. You were one of the guys that they said turned it down. What was up with that? Yeah. Uh, well, and, and they had it backwards, you know, they turned me down, uh, cause we had, we had offered, Goldeboy had offered them a, for me to fight on the, on the, uh, Hopkins card. We were supposed to fight 10 and they turned it down cause the money wasn't right, which, you know, they weren't being fair about it. They wanted, you know, a lot of money, uh, even more than the main event, you know, so they weren't being reasonable. So they, I guess they went on their own and, and tried to make a fight in Russia and then, meanwhile, they were looking for me for another opponent on another show um, with Benavides. So then they tried to, um, you know, offer us something out in Russia, which was not enough money. And, you know, um, they told me a lot of things about Russia that was against me. So uh, being, you know, drug testing and funny things going on over there and, you know, a lot of uh, the IRS and government, the way everything works. Uh, I was not even going to get paid nearly what they were saying, so... I don't think it was worth it. It was just gonna be another, you know, hometown cooking. So, uh, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to avoid that, those kind of things, you know. At the, I'm sure in the at future, the, it happen. At the uh, presser here in Los Angeles, you know, Tim Bradley mentioned that he had, you know, slapped leather a few times with both of you. If you removing yourself from the fight, if you were the analyst. Watching you, watching Mauricio Herrera fight Jose Benavides. How do you see this fight, the making of this fight, as the outsider looking in? Me watching uh, m- uh, myself fighting Benavides. Yes. Um, well, I think it would be an interesting fight. Uh, looking at it from the outside, um, uh, it's, it will be a tough fight. I can see it being a tough fight. Um, Benavitas, um using his reach, you know, me trying to get inside, moving a lot of head movement. But um, I think at the end, uh, I'll be the more tough and durable guy, and we'll and we'll figure things out. I think I'm, I'm older than Benavitas, so I can see um, a lot of experience playing there. You know, him being young, um, they just uh, they're easy to frustrate. There's a lot of things that that can go on in there that um, I think I'm able to to handle it better. Right. I think the end result is I'll be with my hands raised, and uh, I can see it happening. You're definitely going to be a very, very interesting card. Ryan, did you have more questions for Mauricio? Yeah. Um, can you make a fight pick between Vargas and DeMarco? Uh, you know, that's going to be a good fight, it's, uh, but I, I'll lean towards DeMarco on that one. Oh, really? The, it's going with the underdog. I guess uh, Jesse Vargas fighting out of Vegas is uh, is going to hurt him. Oh yeah, he's like they say, you can't, can't win a fight in Vegas with Jesse Vargas, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I like the mark, but I think he's tough, and um, I think it's a it's, it's a tough fight for Jesse. But 
Uh, you never know, but I'll, I'll lean toward Demarco. Cool. Uh, who right. do you think poses the the you know the biggest threat to you at um, junior welterweight? The biggest threat. Um, yeah. I don't know. You know, I never thought about that, but um, I know Provokno is, is still a tough guy. I think I always say he's the he's a real tough guy. To, just to go in the. I mean, if you look at everybody who fought Provokno. Even in, like Algeria and I that beat Pavano still came out of the fight like a war, you know, beat up. Uh, even with mm-hmm. Bradley, and if, and if you didn't, if you didn't win, if you won or you lost, either way you were hurt, you were knocked out, or you or you knew you were in a fight with him. So, I think Rosalind is, you know, posed a big threat so far, you know, only because I know I, because I, I fought him, you know, and I compare him to, you know, the guys I fought with Alvarado and Danny Garcia, you know, these other guys Mayfield. And everybody in my career, but I see Rosalan being the big threat. Um, you know what, Broner's, uh, I think is 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 a tough guy too. Uh, he's trying to throw more punches now. You know, he before he didn't look as you know he didn't look he wasn't that that I didn't think was that great. Now he's looking like he's getting a little better. Um, but I, there's a lot of 140s out there that uh, who knows? You know, they just styles make fights. You know, and you never know. You see a guy just look so great and get in there and give you all the problems. Okay, where do you think uh, Matisse stacks up in, uh, you know, the danger department? Yeah, I think Matisse is real dangerous, too. You know, I think he's up there. Uh, you know, Danny Garcia is dangerous still. You know, um, him and Matisse, I think, about the same, the same danger. Uh, if I was to fight Matisse, I think it'd be the same danger as Danny Garcia. But, um, yeah, you know, I sparred Matisse, so, I mean, uh, I kind of know how he is. And, yeah, he, he's a real he's, – the thing is, he's a hard puncher. That's what's uh, – you got to kind of stay away from. Not too many boxers out there either, you know. That's the thing with these hard punchers. There's not too many boxers out there. It's going to make it hard for everybody. <laughs> How would a fight between him and uh, a guy like Provodnikov go? Yeah, I was I was thinking about that the other day, and, man, that that would be a fight of the year there. I mean, um, I don't know how well um, Matisse Chin is, but um, Provodnikov hits really hard. And not only that, he's just quick. And, um, you know, I was disappointed in Matisse when he fought Danny Garcia. He, he just seemed like he was overwhelmed or it was too much for him. And, I don't know, he was just a bit jakey. But uh, if he were to fight Provognico, man, that, I don't know, I'm, I lean a little towards Provognico. But it will still be a hell of a fight. You never know. I agree with you. That That's pretty much the same way I see it. Absolutely. For for so for those of who are listening to the show and uh, join hearing from you tonight, you know what's the best way they can keep up with you and and follow you and keep up with your career. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Mauricio Hera three fifty nine. Same with Instagram and uh, Twitter at in Maestro. Um, yeah, follow me. Be out there, put updates on everything, and um, yeah, we'll be ready December thirteenth. So everybody, I uh, hope uh, that tunes in. You can see two great hungry. Uh, Warriors whining it so bad, and uh, I think we'll put a great show, and the people will be happy. Are you before you head out to Vegas? Uh, you know, during the last week or so before your fight, are you planning on having any other LA-based uh, media opportunities or fan opportunities for them to come out and check you out before the fight? Uh, don't know yet. They haven't told me anything. Uh, maybe I think uh, I would have to find out. Maybe by next, if it's anything, it would probably be by next week. Uh, but then let me know, and um, I'll just put it out there. All right. Well, I wish you the best of luck uh, to offer my early prediction. I predict that you go the distance with Benavides and win by decision. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing your fight. I'll be in Vegas that weekend for the fight. So I look forward to seeing you in the ring, and that's uh, my prediction you. for your fight. All right. Thank so, Ryan, you. Before yeah. we wrap up. You're right. So, Ryan, any last? Last thoughts for Mauricio before um, we no, man, uh, just, sign off um, Just just keep winning, man, and uh, hopefully you'll finally get that uh, big opportunity. Oh, yeah, we will. No, thank you, guys. Thank you guys for this interview. You guys just uh, keep helping fighters get out there. I uh, just want to thank you guys again. Absolutely. It's been our pleasure. All right, take care. All right, you take care. <laughs> 